Brandon, big early season matchup. What happened to all the cupcakes on the schedule early for the Power Sixes? But still, unknowns abound. We could be in for a very, very good game tonight. Well, let's go ahead and get you the starting lineup sponsored by Jeep. There's only one for Illinois. No Kofi Coburn, third and final game of his suspension. The All-American is out again tonight. For Marquette, Daryl Morsell, the Maryland transfer, who will be very familiar with Illinois, his former conference mates. He is at 20 points in both of the two wins. So The officials, Bo Borowski, Paul Sells, Larry Scarano. It is Kirk Kleff tipping against Omar Payne, and off we go as Payne and Illinois get the opening tap. Both teams coming in 2-0. Illinois having defeated Jackson State and Arkansas State. Marquette with wins over SIU, Edwardsville, and New Hampshire. Going inside. Hawkins kicks back out for a three from the wing, and that's off the heel, and the rebound comes down to Kolick. Be interesting to see what kind of offense Marquette runs. A lot of new faces, new coach, which we'll get into. A lot of unknowns for them. Well, that's been a struggle for them early. Three-point shooting just 26% through the first couple of games for Marquette. But you said it, Donnie. Nine newcomers, five freshmen, four transfers. Much more experience for Illinois. And one of their returnees missing there, Coleman Hawkins. And let's face it, this Illinois team, is their staple is still defense. How will they find ways to put the ball in the basket is a huge question mark for them tonight. Frazier missed, and then the rejection swatted out of there. But picking it up and knocking it down is Grandison from outside the arc. Such a great play. you got to be ready. It's almost like a long rebound. Be ready to catch and shoot when that defense is trying to recover off the, after the block shot. Justin Lewis, this is one of the three returners for Marquette this year. Driving into the lane, Prosper, no good. Olivier Maxens Prosper, though, gets fouled, and the Clemson transfer will head to the line. Shaka Smart, born in Rhode Island, but he grew up in this state right outside of Madison, Wisconsin, and he's back home, Donnie, to lead the Golden Eagles. I like the look, too. He's got the golf shirt with the, just in case it's a little chilly. Yeah, you got the long sleeves underneath. We know it's cold in the great state of Wisconsin. Temperatures today topped out at 37 in Milwaukee. A little <laughs> chillier than what he got used to down there in Austin, Texas the past six <laughs> Just seasons. Just a little. <laughs> it's always a question, though. Olivier. I've heard uh, all week, though, about what they're going to wear. You know, Mick Cronin against Nova. He went with the suit and tie, looking dapper. Danny Hurley at UConn last week. They, they went with no ties. Underwood over there. He's got his... Bob Huggins look. <laughs> yeah, most coaches have stuck with a casual. Here's the backcourt pressure. And, Donnie, this is the trademark of Shaka Smart's teams, whether it's been VCU, Texas, and now at Marquette. They will pick up full court. Yeah, the names have changed. It. We obviously world-renowned havoc defensively, but it's still pressure on the ball. Spacing is still tremendous, and the communication so important. Grandison had his shot blocked, so two early blocks for Marquette, but the fighting Illini keep the basketball here. This is their court leader, Andre Curbelo. Gets inside, nifty move, lays it up and in. And so good, he's been challenged to become a shooter, more of a scorer. He doesn't need to handle the ball like that. Oh. And then a turnover traded with a turnover as Coleman Hawkins lost it off his knee. Brad Underwood... That's been something his team has struggled with the first two games. 16 turnovers averaged in the wins over Jackson State and Arkansas State. Now the flip side of that coin is Illinois has been forcing almost 20 turnovers a game. Driving inside off the ball fake, but missing and the rebound coming into the hands of Hawkins. Lewis lucky there. Might have been an offensive foul with that offhand. No call. Here is Curbelo, Big Ten Sixth Man of the Year last year on the All-Freshman team, but he turns it over the other direction, and, yep, another. 
another turnover. This time, Olivier Max, it's prospered down. He got it stuck on his hip. And for Andre Curbelo, last season, for he and Underwood, it was a, a season of, okay, are you going to allow me to play my game if you're Curbelo? And Underwood did. But now this year, you're going to have to be a little bit more tightened up, a little bit more tidy if you're Curbelo. A lot rests on his shoulders. Take better care of the basketball. You don't have those guys to fix those issues like you did last year. That one deadens off the back of the iron and down. Grandison has five early, and that's the Illinois lead over Marquette. And an alley-oop, but disrupting. Good job defensively at Illinois the other way. And another travel. This time again on Curbelo and Downey already in this game. We've had five turnovers in less than three minutes. And you talk about a guy in Io DeSumo who's no longer with the team back home with the Chicago Bulls. He could erase some of these issues with Curbelo on the floor. But this is a team that, more, most importantly, that guy, Andre Curbelo, has to understand it's his team. Yes, Kofi Coburn will be back, but he's not handling the basketball like that. He has to be very aware to not make those those issues and those mistakes that are unforced. Well, you talked about the numbers last year for Curbelo, the 129 assists, and he definitely could dish it, but he did have 80 turnovers, and that's something he and Brad Underwood really want to try to cut down this season. But he's got two so far. Attacking the rim, Kirk Clef gets fouled, and he will head to the line with a foul on Benjamin Bossman's for Doc, the 6'8 big, big man. Queth already very active. Did a great job on the defensive end. That long reach here. You give him the ball in a, in a spot that he can handle it. Just go up and dunk it. Kirk Queth, this is his third stop. He started at Salt Lake Community College, and then he went to Oklahoma for three years, including last season where they made the NCAA tournament, and now finishing up here in Milwaukee. But he misses the second. Started 15 games for Oklahoma last year, so he, he's a veteran. He knows what he's doing out on the floor. There's that pressure, and there is the turnover. They didn't get it across in time. Shaka Smart trying to fire up the crowd at Pfizer Forum. Tell you what, some teams go through these phases of trying to make people think that they are better defensively than they are well right now there is a ton of substance to what Shaka Smart is giving this crowd and his team is giving this crowd defensively forcing turnovers early gives you a little bit of a peek of what their identity can be Illinois four turnovers in their last five possessions as they try to settle in that pass there by Kolick and it's taken away Underneath, Bossman's for Doc. Fighting for position, he lost it going up. And it goes right back to Marquette. And boy, what a sloppy three and a half plus minutes to start this one tonight. You got to give Queth a lot of credit there. 6'10", long, changing that shot. But when you're going to make the pass, Kolek has to understand you can't throw the ball to a, a 6'10 guy shins. Give it to him. Deliver it where he can catch it. Well, this time Kolek just says, I'll pull it myself. But he's off the back of the iron from the top of the arc. Here's Trent Frazier. And he loses his footing and falls to the ground. It's a travel. And whatever it is, there is substance. And there could have been a trip there. Very easily could have been called. I think the official may have missed that one as Frazier was picking the ball up. Had that right foot taken out from under him. Frazier to the bench. One of their senior leaders. His 128th game today for the Fighting Illini. He got tangled with Daryl Morcell, who's got the ball now. Again, Morcell is a Maryland transfer who's led them in scoring the first two games. And right on cue, he takes it to the basket. Going to be a delay of game there. Showing off his soccer skills after he made the layup. <laughs> Heading the ball to half court. Early turnovers. Two teams feeling each other out. Illinois by two. 
And I tell you, you just never know how people impact your life directly or indirectly. For me, Dave Gavitt, indirectly, because he was one of the creators of the Big East, which is a conference that I played in, did so much, was president of the Olympic governing body, developed the idea of the dream team. So he wasn't just a basketball coach and a commissioner. Dave Gavitt did so many things, CEO of the Boston Celtics, the list goes on and on. I, I am friendly with Danny Gavitt, name drop. So I, and from time to time, I tell him, I think, I think Pops would be proud of you, especially after the job you did last year in the NCAA tournament. But the Gavitts are uh, an incredible, incredible basketball fan. They mean so much to to uh, so many people. Yeah, well said. You saw the miss shot by Plummer there. Marquette getting the ball back and miss firing from deep. And there's Plummer on the rebound into the game for the first time. Rebounding has been a big story. Illinois, despite the turnovers, they're up 10 to 2 on the glass as Curbelo misses the runner and it goes out of bounds off of the fighting Illini. Well, even though you play without your biggest player, it doesn't mean that you have to be less aggressive. I always thought that that was the hardest thing early on when the star player or one of your important players misses two or three games, like Kofi Coburn has. How do you adjust and how do you continue to, to maintain who you are? And Illinois has done a pretty darn good job of that aggressively on the glass. Yeah, I mean, that's 17 points and 10 rebounds a game they're missing. And look at Curbelo rising at 6-1 to knock it out of the hands of 6'10 Kirk Clef. Well, he's tough. He can handle that the other end, but he's got great basketball knowledge. He understands where to be, the timing of it. Crafty little guy. Here's Morcell, and he knocks it down. How about finding a new identity late in your college basketball career? This guy was the Big Ten Defensive Player of the Year last season. And now he's um, early on, I understand. It's a small sample size, but a big-time scorer is Marcel. Look at this. There's no second thought. You know, I, I had done a ton of games. You and I both at Maryland, and, and this is a different guy already. There's been someone who's gotten into his head and said, listen, you can be a two-way player, and he's been that for Marquette so far this season. Donna, he never scored 20 points at Maryland in 126 games, and he starts this year off 21 in game one, 26 in the win against New Hampshire. You're exactly right. He's kind of recreated himself, and he's got Marquette on top for the first time tonight. It's awesome to see when guys transfer, they use that extra year, and they really take advantage of it. They don't just go and camp out and say, oh, I'd like to finish, you know, here because I like the city, I like the food, whatever it is. He's a guy who's already taken advantage of this opportunity. Cam Jones lost his footing, and a Marquette turnover gives it back to Illinois. Down inside, Omar Payne goes up, contact, and he'll shoot two. The foul on Justin Lewis. This is one of those guys, Donnie, that has to help pick up the slack in the absence of Kofi Coburn as a Florida transfer who has three years of eligibility left. It's a great pick and lob guy. A go get it guy. He's got 15 foot range, but he's more of a rim protector. But you're absolutely right. He has the potential to be a very good shot blocker and is getting some really good minutes these first three games or so without Coburn to show the staff, hey, maybe I can help you guys. Maybe I, maybe I can play alongside of of Kofi. 6'10, 240, and he knocks down the second, and we're even at eight. running the point guard position after not doing that at George Mason last year as a freshman. Do roll for him. Here he is. Drives inside. Got a great look. Missed it. Rebound Illinois. I think he was surprised at how open he was and that ball just slipped out of his hand trying to get it up to the backboard quick. Illinois plus seven on the glass. Trying to step through, Frazier kicks it out, open look, Plummer, offensive rebound, Hawkins. Hawkins, adjusts, 
short. Another offensive board. Illinois is dominating the glass. Frazier, step back. Got it. Well, that's another guy who Coach Underwood has to lean on. Cam Jones misses. I mean, yeah, Frazier, he and Williams, Donnie, are the two that have been there since 2017. Frazier, you talk about a guy who shoots just under 40% from three for his career. He really knows how to fill it up. More touches for that guy. That time, the mid-range not kind to him. Here's Morsell again. Driving down the lane. Contact will send Justin Lewis to the line. Tell you, Justin Lewis looks good. Looks trim. Shed some of that baby fat. Such a smart player. Has a great feel for the game. I think we hear that more and more. You know, the, the turn used to be great basketball IQ. It's one thing to be smart, but if you don't have the feel and the, the physicality to go along with it, the IQ won't take you very far and Justin Lewis to me has obviously the smarts but he also has the body and the feel he's got terrific hands he's a tough fundamentally sound player I mean look at those arms <laughs> that's one thing you cannot teach is arm length <laughs> 6'7", 245, and yeah, he was chiseled last year. He's even more chiseled this season. He hits the second one and gets a breather as he's replaced by Prosper. I'm trying to figure, because we weigh the same. We just we don't look the same. We're both 6'7", 245. What weighs more, fat or muscle? I forget. Muscle, muscle weighs more, but Donnie, I'm, I'm 5'10", 160, so this is not a conversation for me. <laughs> Take it away as Payne had it stripped. Right down the lane, off the mark by Cam Jones, and Illinois gets it right back. Frazier drives inside, finishes through the contact. He'll head to the line. I mean, this is a guy who scored up 1,500 points in his career. And he has the ability to take over games. And these are great times for Trent Frazier because he's entered the, the season ranked number 19 in, on the Illinois scoring list. He's in a position where Io's gone, Kofi's a big. Uh, he's really moved into a position where, hey, this, you know, we talk about Andre Carbello and so doesn't Coach Underwood. But this guy right here, to me, this is his team. He's been here the longest. He's done so much. He's won so many games for them. He scored the last six points, and you mentioned where he stands on the all-time Illinois scoring list. With that last bucket and free throw, he moves up to 17th all-time. Mitchell cuts in on the angle. Tap back, no good, and Frazier grabs a carrot. Curbelo bumped on his way to the basket by Prosper. We talked about him, Trent Frazier, Wellington High School's finest, the step back, lefty, smooth, day or lay. Which one do you want? Give it to them all. Give them all of it, Trent. Both, both sides have their issues. 16 rebounds for Illinois, 14 points. You got to capitalize a little bit. And I know a lot of those are on the defensive end, 10 of them. But still, you got six offensive rebounds, like you stated, Brandon. So both sides are now trying to, they're trying to figure out how to work their way out of this, almost like they're in quicksand. They just can't get it going. Frazier and Frazier is personally right now on a 9-1 to one run. He scored nine straight for the Fighting Illini. What a luxury, though, to come out of a timeout and know that you have a guy who can get you a bucket, run your stuff. I tell you, so many times we see out of timeouts players turning the ball over, not understanding what the play is. Something to be said about having an upperclassman when you when you want to run your stuff out of bounds out of the timeout. 
Frazier, who missed the first game with a shoulder injury, scored 12 last game, but he's on a roll here in the first half. There's an offensive rebound for Marquette, but they cannot convert as Zigadaro has it go in and out. Curbelo trying to create that ball is kicked by Daryl Morsell. And again, just a little too low on the pass. You know, when you have a, a smaller guard, it's so important for the, the bigger players to say, hey, listen, I know you like the bounce pass, but throw it to me where only I can get it. So those bounce passes, yeah, they look good, but there's no style points. You got to make that pass and put it in a good spot for your big. Drive it baseline. Grandison had just missed it. Kolek will bring it up for Marquette. Tyler Kolek out of the air, kicks it out. And stepping on the sideline there, Stevie Mitchell, a careless turnover. And those are just plays that you can't have. You know, they're unforced. I think sometimes as players we get ahead of ourselves we know we're wide open we get the ball and we just don't really understand where our surrounding what our surroundings are where our feet are perfect example there one of the four freshmen comes in amari and ellis from davenport iowa which is right on the illinois iowa border Corbello, the little guy tried to pound it inside and he's going to get called for the offensive foul so donnie he already has two look at this Small on small violence. Two little guys banging down low. Well, at times last year, that was an issue for Curbelo. In addition to the turnovers, he would get into a little bit of foul trouble, and he already has to sit here with 10.45 remaining. And there's an offensive foul on David Joplin on the other side. So with Andre Curbelo out, Trent Frazier doing even more of the ball handling duties. So many times players try to find that contact, try to get to the foul line before they make the basket. It's just great focus, avoiding some contact and getting that basket. Frazier can't hit. It's been a slow start offensively for Marquette. Just three field goals made and five turnovers for the Golden Eagles so far. Especially against the team that historically is as good defensively and on a string as Illinois. They want you to try to dribble through them because, one, they can stand you up. They have good on-ball defenders. And, two, they know that they have help if they are beaten off the dribble. But just too much dribbling right now for Marquette. 17 to 11 Illinois number 10 team in the country coming off that great season last year where they were a number one seed But knocked off in the second round by Loyola stepping into the mid-range and knocking it down Alfonso Plummer Charge, great body control. Defender stands in, ready to take it. Terrific take to the rim. Tyler Kolak, A-10 Rookie of the Year last season at George Mason, leads the team in assists and steals so far on the young season. 
Shot clock down to three. And a travel is going to be called there on Plummer. Yeah, that works in the NBA. <laughs> but the way this game is going and as many whistles that have been blown, you, you have to keep it simple. And you have to move the basketball. You have to get back to your fundamentals. You know, these herky-jerky games where every other trip down the whistles being blown you have to find a way to get through them and that move is not going to get you through 16 turnovers combined that shot is missed interestingly though Donnie only eight points combined off of those turnovers between the two teams the 12 minutes for the fighting Illini. It's a tough job for Trent Frazier. He can handle it, but he, when you're used to being that off guard and, and you're the microwave and your team needs you to get some shots, it's hard to now get back into that mold when your point guard's in foul trouble to now try to get other guys into their spots. It's a tall task, even for a veteran like Frazier. Yeah, Corbello on the bench with the two fouls again. No Kofi Coburn serving the third and final game of his suspension. What a what a finish by Kirkwood. And a foul. The crowd getting into a frenzy, but the foul by Kolick stops the clock and takes us to a timeout. When you're struggling, get it to your big. Queth Love with the finish. And Underwood telling you get down. Shaka gone on that same, but they traveled the same kind of journey. If you think about where they started, you know, mid-majors, lower division ones, and they've worked their way up. And, and you just, you have to have respect for a guy like that. When a guy beats you a couple times, that, that'll earn the respect as well. But it's awesome <laughs> to see what their journey has been and where they are now. Open slam for Omar Payne, and that puts Illinois back up a half dozen. Well, Brad Underwood actually said that when they were, when he was at Stephen F. Austin, his attack back there for Kirk Weth goes down. He called Shaka Smart to pick his brain. Now, keep in mind, Underwood's 13 years older, but he wanted to talk to Shaka about the success he had and how to build a program. Yeah, you think it's easy. You know, people on the outside, they think, oh, you just get some good players, a couple guys who can shoot, a couple that can rebound, and, and it's done. But you need character guys. You, you need to know that guys want to fight for one another, and that's that's kind of the theme that we got from both coaches and talking to them today. A walk there. Coleman Hawkins shuffled his feet underneath the basket. Another turnover for Illinois. Both teams just... Unsettled for, for whatever reason, maybe it's it's an early season opponent that is as big and as strong as you. Well, you're used to playing some lesser opponents this early to pad your stats, if you will. Now off the mark, no foul. Justin Lewis was looking for contact. Well, yeah, certainly the first two games for both of these teams a little bit different. I mentioned Illinois beat up on Jackson State and Arkansas State. Marquette beat SIU Edwardsville and New Hampshire, but they labored in both of those games as Frazier misses a three. And I've talked to couple dozen coaches already this season and, and most of them have said if we're playing defensively like we know we can they're not worried about their offense that will come and I think Marquette is in that position right now keep playing really good defense you know your offense will eventually come but you have to move the basketball to find your offense well, I think it's fair to say, Donnie, that through 14 minutes and 11 seconds here, the defenses have certainly been ahead of the offenses. <laughs> yeah, defensive people will say, wow, what a great defensive matchup. But most people would say, wow, this is some, some bad shooting. But th that's an effect of the pressure defense on the ball, help side. 
Well, there's some good offense. How about that one-handed scoop finish from the freshman Cam Jones? I like there wasn't a lot of playing around with the basketball. Almost a straight line. Beat your man, get to the rim. And now in some trouble. Grandison does get some help. Finds Demonte Williams. Frazier tries to go to work, and he travels. He dragged that pivot foot. Seen that a lot this season. Watching games on television hasn't been called as much as I think it should have been. But again, it's all about your fundamentals. Two foot jump stop. Just watch that back foot. It's gonna slide. You just can't do it. You can pivot. You can't slide on it. And you notice who was defending at Morsell. Those two had a lot of battles when Morsell was at Maryland. Jumper knocked down there for Lewis, and we are tied up at 21. Look at Shaka Smart. Frazier, great pass, and a rejection. What a block by Kirkland. throws coming up but a chance for Marquette to grab the lead Kirk West terrific job of helping out a teammate and he's just so long and at the other end it just can't happen you foul a jump shooter right in front of your own bench First free throw is good, and Marquette right now, Donnie, on an 11-2 run, and they have all the momentum. Well, it's all set up by, again, defensively keeping that pressure. You've got a big guy downstairs that can either, if he's not blocking a shot, he's going to change a shot. If nothing else, he's going to make you think about him in that area in Quest. But you see on these sidelines, Shaka Smart is a thousand percent bought in. It's hard for your players to not be when your coach is over there showing that much enthusiasm. And Brad Underwood has opted to put Curbelo back in the game with those two fouls. Here he is. Coleman Hawkins right to the rim. Nice job using his body with the dribble, cutting off the defender. A little hesitation. And a quiet first half for Hawkins after averaging 15 and 10 through the first two games. And we've got immediate timeout. Four minutes left. All even in Milwaukee. One, but in the interim, it's all Bucks branding. I just thought they were showing off. The people there in Milwaukee just saying, <laughs> you know what, we're just going to rub it in a little bit. Remind you who the world champs are. Boy, it was an electric atmosphere for Game 6 when they defeated the Suns back on July 20th to bring the title here to Milwaukee. Andre Curbelo curling around the pass, but a rejection again. Boy, Kirk Queth has been so good underneath that basket. Just covers so much ground with that length and does it without fouling. Dangerous pass, shot clock at two, Hawkins, he double dribbled. I will say, having four or five turnovers in the first half does not dent Corbello's confidence whatsoever. <laughs> he continues to make these risky passes, and again, you know, we're giggling a little bit, but it's, it's just one of those situations where Brad Underwood has said, listen, I, I'm going to give you some rope, but you have to show me that I can trust you at the right times. He does have four turnovers as Curbelo goes back to the bench. Hawkins also now has four turnovers after that last miscue for Illinois. Jumper Justin Lewis knocks it down. Just so tough. 
awesome shot there. You know, these guys come in and you think as freshmen, ah, oh, he's just a big, he's got to work into it. But Justin Lewis has turned into, in his second year, already, again, it's, it's just, we haven't played that many games, but you can just tell by the way he carries himself the kind of player he is. And he's got five points. Now in the lane, Bossman's for Doc. Misses the left-hander off the heel. He just makes you shoot shots you wouldn't normally shoot. Well, this one taken away by DeMonte Williams. Williams gives it to Frazier. Those are the two fifth-year seniors that have been in the program all five years with Brad Underwood. Long three, long miss by Hawkins. And a terrific job of continuing with the play. And Hawkins, probably an ill-advised three, the play before. This is where you like him more. It's just a higher percentage. Not saying he can't knock down a three, but when you're struggling, keep the pressure on the defense in the post. And, and most importantly, there's been a lot of whistles in this first half, Brandon. Continue to keep the pressure on the stripes. You know, you're, you're letting them off the hook, including the defense, when you take those long threes. Another offensive rebound. How about the effort there by DeMonte Williams? He grabs it and he'll take the timeout. Shaka Smart was hoping for a foul. He didn't get it. People today. He's on the road. You just you can't express how important that is. And, and we talk about defense travels, but so does a rebounding, and especially offensive rebounding. These guys, these guys from Illinois, they know how to attack the glass. They know how to read it. And they're showing that in this first half. Can't, they're not scoring great, but they're giving themselves opportunities. Trent Frazier, nine points to lead Illinois. Curls it over to Hawkins, lets it fly, and he misses it. There's Devontae Williams again. He throws it off Quack to save the possession. And that's another name we haven't really mentioned. But the NCAA is a three-point shooting percentage last year, and DeMonte Williams he has not scored. But it shows you that a senior knows how to stick his nose in, stay in the game, and not, not sulk when he's not playing well. He is the son of... Frank Williams, 2001 Big Ten Player of the Year at Illinois, and now DeMonte in his fifth and final season in Champaign. Shot clock is all the way down at one. They didn't realize it. They don't get it off. A turnover yet again for Illinois. And those are situations where you think, okay, I would assume last year he would have told his guys, all right, when we're taking this ball out, we got eight seconds. We got ten seconds, four seconds. That's where Trent Frazier, Williams, those guys have to tell their teammates There's so many ways you can lead in a game. Marcel, open three, knocks it down. Team to four run to be up 28-25. A lot of time coming off that clock with the pressure. Illinois out of sorts. Williams trying to tie it. No. Offensive rebound and an easy put back. Look what I found. Coleman Hawkins. So unfortunate because that was about 24-25 great seconds of defense by Marquette. <laughs> Rejection coming over and blocking it. Omar Payne, the Florida transfer. And these are situations where Shaka Smart has to say, you know what? Again, we have to go grab the ball. He, he talked about it a couple of timeouts ago. Go grab the basketball. Pollock just trying to, he's got to try to navigate around <laughs> these bigger bodies this season. Not sure he was used to seeing a lot of that. Last year, into that hat, 16 and 4. That was the winningest Big Ten season ever 
for them last year. So th this is a, an Illinois team that is back. They're on the map. And yes, Ayodosunmu is gone. He's moved on to the NBA. But you're right. The Big Ten preseason player of the year and Kofi Coburn will be back. And it'll be interesting to see how they use him once he comes back. What style they will play with him. With different guys handling the ball now. They play Cincinnati next Monday in Kansas City, and that is when Coburn will return. And I, I'm with you. They've mm, had to shuffle the lineup so much, and with all some new faces, it might take some time. Hawkins, that pass deflected. Watch the shot clock here. Eight-second difference. Long three off the mark. Final possession for Marquette. Kolak drives the dishes. There's Morsell. Offensive board, and it belongs to Illinois with 1.7. Queth comes in for the defensive presence, replacing Joplin. And that ball just went off Joplin's foot. <laughs> Frazier missing it at the horn, and Marquette with a strong close. To the first 20 minutes leads 28 27 coming up after the break mike hill steve lavin jim jackson breaking down all the action on the jeep halftime report we expected a good one in the gamut tip-off games here in milwaukee and that's what we've got 26 games or whatever it is played for maryland he's never had 20 points never had 20 points already has a couple on the season so this is a different guy that illinois is seeing uh, and he I think you need as we say in college basketball to see more of him early and often His career high while he was at Maryland came against Illinois 19 points back in January of This year there's a foul on the dome going the other way on the first play of the second half Goal. Goaltending call count the bucket 30 to 27 for Marquette, the lead is three. It's a nice call coming out of halftime by Shaka Smart, and they ran it to completion. Yeah, apologies, Donnie and I are not on site, so sometimes it's a little hard to tell, but that was basket interference, and that is a turnover by Omar Payne. But it's a, a tough pass. Corbello gets caught in the air, has really no place to go, so he throws it to Payne underneath, who is underneath the basket. You gotta set your guys up. That's a part of being a leader at that point guard position. Justin Lewis, Donnie, we've seen him now on a couple of occasions knock down that 18 footer. When we talk about Daryl Marcel and, and maybe getting more touches for him, how about Justin Lewis getting him in his sweet spots? Puts Marquette up five, largest lead for the Golden Eagles. Hawkins, he's had a cold hand tonight. This time he wisely takes it to the basket. Anytime you get a guy like Quet that far away from the basket, you have to put it on the floor. Will send more sell to the charity stripe for a pair. Yeah, it seems like Shaka Smart told his guys at halftime, listen, straight line, put your head down, get to the rim. There's a lot of whistles in that first half. So that means they're hot. <laughs> the whistles are hot, the officials are hot, they're feeling pretty good about themselves. Keep them involved, keep them engaged, and that's how you do it. You get your nose to that rim. Daryl Morsell, who had eight in the first half. This is the first free throw there. The kid from Baltimore, Maryland, who had the great seasons at Maryland for the Terps. You mentioned it, Donnie, last year, Big Ten Defensive Player of the Year. He was Maryland's premier defender for three straight seasons. And now showing his offensive prowess, he has nine. And he's got to get to that line a lot more. Also, terrific free throw shooter. And here is that pressure that Shaka Smart's teams like to put on, but Illinois able to break it, and then they calm things down with a sophomore, Andre Curbelo. Curbelo will take a three. He does.
doesn't often do that. He misses, and then saving the possession, Jacob Grandison able to throw it off of Justin Lewis. And you want him to get back in the game and be engaged, Carbello, but you also want him to take good shots. Not saying he can't make that shot, but sometimes when you've been on the bench a long stretch of time in the first half, you, you try to get it back as soon as you get in. A foul there before the shot attempt. Well, Donnie, to your point, though, about Curbelo, you combine last year and this year, he's 5 of 40 from outside the arc, so that has not been his bread and butter. And I don't think he has to turn into that. It, listen, you got to make a shot, but when teams are giving you that much space, he has the ability to get downhill with that terrific ball handling ability and get to like the rack. And there's the putback. Omar Payne flushes it. And even if he doesn't score, you see right there, they're going to come to try to block it. Payne wide open for a tip dunk. And Illinois pulls back with it, too. A little over two minutes gone by in the second half. Long rebound to Frazier. Curbelo finding Grandison. Grandison back out to Frazier. And he returns it to Grandison, and Grandison knocks it down, and Illinois is back in front. Ball movement so good there, keeping the pressure on. And Hawkins there able to get the tip. That leads to the run out. Curbelo scores it at the rim. Three-pointer again off the mark. Marquette's outside shooting woes continue. And Illinois all of a sudden in the last minute plus has seized the momentum. This is just great ball movement, unselfishness, short closeout. The guy stops short, his hands are down, you got to let that thing go. And listen, you got to take the good with the bad with Andre Curbelo. A couple drives to the basket, missed one, tip dunk, but he set it up. And then that one, nice little layup in transition. Curbelo, who missed the opener with a concussion and came back against Arkansas State on Friday. 8.7 assists, just two turnovers. Had the four turnovers in the first half, but a much stronger start to the second half so far. Who almost lost it. Feeds it inside. And knocked out of bounds. It will stay with Illinois with 18 to shoot. Good defense by Iguodaro. Carmelo just has so much creativity <laughs> in his game and in his mind. At times, yes, you love it, but other times he's going to have to figure out how to temper that a little bit. I think he was trying to throw a one-handed pass and couldn't grip it and probably saved a, tur a turnover. But he's so talented. He really is. With that ball in his hand, he's crafty. Knows how to get into the teeth. Yeah, he made some plays last year as a freshman that were just incredible. Highlight sizzle real plays. Kid who moved from Puerto Rico five years ago to New York City to go to high school. And now a highly prized recruit in the second season at Illinois. He pulls and he knocks it down from 18 feet. And what's wrong with that? Not everyone has to be a three-point shooter. Now some analytics guys will say it's just not a high percentage shot, but I tell you what, it's it's a high percentage shot when it goes in. 9-0 run, and now Illinois will have a chance to add to it. Look at the rebounds. Totally in favor of the visitors. Curbelo has it knocked out. Again, trying to get to that that one hand there weren't a lot of guys who played this game at least that I played against that could put it in that one hand the little guy's got to keep two on it plus you, you, you increase the opportunity to get fouled when you have two hands on it Had the good first half. Hit a couple of threes here just inside the arc. Off the front of the iron. Strong rebound by Lewis. Marquette trying to stop that 9-0 run. Kolek in the lane. No. Got his 
zone miss, but he's going to be called for a push off, and that'll take us to the under 16 media timeout. And Andre Curbelo with the little pity pat there, step back. That is fighting a lineup. I think people forget the, the great coach that Dave Gabbard was as well. Eight 20 win seasons at Providence, a couple years at Dartmouth. Providence, the floor at the Dunkin' Donuts Center. Named after him. Here's a turnover. Another one by Curbelo. Chance for Marquette to capitalize. Down five. Knocks down the three, and that stops the bleeding. It's a really nice play. You alleviate some of the pressure Kolek has had on him the entire game get him off of the ball and let him spot up and knock one down that pulls him within two just the third made three and 11 tries for Marquette this evening I like the guy made 51 threes in the 8-10 as a freshman yeah he could fill it up at Curbelo with the answer They just got a delay on Curbelo for touching the ball out of the basket. It's a tough one because he threw it to the official. But you can't do that because if the other team is trying to hurry and get the ball in and run their stuff, you just slow the game down. So that's a, that's a good call. And keep in mind, any two delays results in a one-shot technical. You got to just leave the ball alone. That's the right call. Here is Kolak. You mentioned his three-point shooting prowess. That was his first make after nine misses to start the season last time down the floor. Here it's Jones, but Jones cannot connect. Thomas is his own miss. Kolak again. Those long rebounds kill you defensively. That was so easy to see a three-point shooter and then just turn and run towards the basket. Still got a box out out there. Is picking up Frazier from the corner. <laughs> Leaning in, Cam Jones. No, put back. Yes. Kolak picked it, but it falls down to Devonte Williams. Boy, better than getting frantic, and it leads to a two-handed jam by Grandison. <laughs> Picking up on both sides. Kolek trying to drop it off. Take it away. Credit Coleman Hawkins with getting a hand in there. Just a tough delivery. Uh, throw that ball up. You can't throw it behind your big cut into the basket. Curbelo down the lane. No. Shot altered. Taken away by Marquette. Get back though, you can't complain to the officials. You gotta get back. Oh, Cam Jones, because he did <laughs> not get back, almost buried the three, Dottie. Again, there are a lot of learning situations happening in this game for Andre Curbelo, every guy, but especially Curbelo in a position that's not just about scoring or fancy passes, even though he can do that. You have to learn how to lead by example as well. And how about Frazier twice in the same spot. He's now over 253 pointers made in his career. Just the fourth ever at Illinois to do that. He's got 15 points. And then a foul on the other side will send Daryl Morsell to the line. I mean, the energy in this building is tremendous right now, both ways. <laughs> They're letting the, the officials hear it. Or they're rooting for their team. Just gives you a sense of how much basketball knowledge and how hungry these fans of Marquette have been and, and are. Well, 
You think about the sustained success that Marquette has had over the years. They had eight straight NCAA tournaments from 2006 to 2013. And then they had struggles the last seven seasons under Steve Wojciechowski. They did make two NCAA tournaments, Donnie, but no wins in the postseason, and that ultimately led to the hiring of that man, Shaka Smart. And you hate to see it. Woj was a terrific guy. I, I've known him a long time since we played against each other in college back in the 1900s. Terrific guy, but <laughs> let's face it, you have to. These schools won't win. You got to win. Both teams 2-0 to start the year. There's a turnover. Taken away by Marquette and Marcel. Three-pointer Stevie Mitchell off the heel. Forty-eight, forty-two. Frazier and Grandison have combined for twenty-five of the forty-eight points for the fighting Illini. And Frazier wants three more, and he's got him. The hard hand for the southpaw from Wellington, Florida. It is tough. Boy, oh, he's tough. Great read. Stop behind. Tell you what, Trent, looking like Joe Frazier, knockout punch from the corner. Give it back to him, another three ball corner pocket and then hiding behind the screen. Wellington's finest. Defensively though, on the road, get yourself matched up, communicate. And sometimes you just, when you have an older team, you don't have to explain what that means. And it's a great, simple timeout call by Brad Underwood. Get matched up, and guys know what that means. Frazier's had the hot hand three threes in the last two and a half minutes to help give the Alana their largest lead of the night. Now Borsell goes to work. He's in double figures with a 10-footer. Look, you got to continue to play defense if you're Marquette. Getting those passing lanes. I like how they're extending it out. But offensively, I don't know why you wouldn't just get out of Morcell's way. Now, listen, you, you got to run some offense, but you got to give him the ball. That went down. Count the bucket. Omar Payne had it pop off the rim, but it fell through. And he'll have a chance to give the Illini a 10-point lead. Yeah, in this full-court pressure, the weak spot has been consistently along that baseline. And, and that's just a fortunate bounce that you don't get too many of those when you're on the road but for Marquette you have to continue to retreat get back and a lot of three-point shots from those corners lay-ins along the baseline they just can't complete that full court pressure free throw no good Illinois two of six from at the line and now Frazier with a steal and he'll go back to the stripe to try to improve the free throw shooting for the Illini Yeah, you drive. I think Illinois has really done a fantastic job the entire game defensively of staying home. When that ball drives to the paint, guys aren't turning their head and looking at the ball. They're seeing their ball, the ball and their man and being in a position to be able to help or go steal it like you saw Trent Frazier do right there. He is really doing it all. Look at the numbers. And now... He has a chance to get to 20 here with 11.07 remaining in the second half. Frazier, a guy who committed to the former coach, John Gross, way back in August of 2016. Then there was a coaching change. Gross was let go. Brad Underwood comes in March of 2017. And Brad Underwood said, I knew him. I had recruited him hard for two years when I was at Stephen F. Austin. There was a comfort level, and Trip Frazier ultimately said he was going to honor his commitment, and he's had a heck of a career. And Trent Frazier, another one of those guys that was known as just a defensive stalwart, has turned into a terrific three-point shooter and just ball handler and all-around scorer. But early in his career, he was the defensive guy that you did not want to see in front of you. Well, 
you're right, Donnie. Last year, he was on the All-Big Ten defensive team, along with Daryl Morsell, now at Marquette. There's a foul inside that's going to go against Omar Payne. And that's just a good play. You're down 11. Try to get an opportunity, as many as you can, to score the ball with the clock stopped. Justin Lewis able to knock down the first. Two double-doubles to start the year for Justin Lewis in the wins over Edwardsville and New Hampshire after not having any double-doubles last year as a true freshman. That is Marquette awesome. back within nine. Yeah, talking to Shaka Smart, you know, that was one of the things he wanted to do was challenge Justin Lewis and say, hey, why not have double-digit rebounding? You have the ability, you have the body, and sometimes you just have to remind us as players that we can do it. And that's going to be an offensive foul, Donnie. Omar Payne with the illegal screen. to blame your big that far away from the basket <laughs> you know he's trying to do his best to free you up and there Trent Frazier is saying listen that's my fault and, and you're absolutely right the coaches are going to blame it on the big but the guards know <laughs> you got to wait for your guy to get set Payne has three fouls he goes to the bench corner three David Joplin rolls around it all to create kicks out there's Frazier again no falls back to Curbelo reset Hawkins got it timeout taken Illinois largest lead at 58 46 such a, a, a just a much better shot than we've seen from him earlier in the game in Illinois right now in control don't go anywhere just three of 13 now last year this was a crew that shot over 37 percent from outside the arc which was good for number three in the big 10 but you know we talked a lot about io dosumu he was a 40 percent three-point shooter and he hit most of those last year saw him play the other night he's still at about 43 percent from three in the nba and now, as you mentioned, down the road with the Chicago Bulls. Inside of 10 minutes left here in the second half. Slipping inside, Morsell looking for contact. No whistle, but count the bucket. It's great creativity, body control. Crispy, they're mine. 58 50. That foul was on Marquette. You heard the crowd complain. They did not like the call, but it will stay with Illinois. Right inside. Lost the handle. Did Grandison. But he's able to pick it up and call a timeout. We'll step aside with him. Less than nine yeah, in the middle of Packer country. You go a little south, you get to Bear country. 
But it's on the hardwood tonight. Illinois, number 10 in the country against Shaka Smart and the Marquette Golden Eagles, who are trying to work their way back. They trail by eight. Curbelo. Whoa, spinning around. Missed it. Got it back. Missed it again. And it pinballs around into the hands of Mitchell. Remember, Marquette was down a dozen a moment ago. And a foul as Justin Lewis started to cut to the basket. Yeah, plenty of time in this game for Marquette. Get another run in you. Continue to keep that crowd engaged. And I think you do that by putting it in Lewis's hands. And obviously, Marcel. Yeah, those have been the two, Donnie, they've combined for 27 of Marquette's 50 points. I mean, look, I know that's obvious. There's nothing profound. But how you do it is what's important. Now, it can't just be give it to a guy and get out of the way. It has to stay within the offense. Corbello goes to the bench. Kolak running shot, but he only got the backboard. Kolak pressing a little bit. Probably like to see him off the ball again, see if he can't get him another open three. That means putting the ball in Marcel's hand at the top. Plummer trying to throw it inside the paint right through his hands. Three on one. Marcel, he'll stop, he'll pop, he'll bury it. That's the Big Ten Defensive Player of the Year last year. Pull it up like he was the leading scorer in the Big Ten. Wow. Frazier, or rather, Landison with the offensive foul out of control, and Marquette gets it right back. This is the new age fast break right here. Three on one. No layups. Got to get back in this game. Marcel from Philly. First year at Marquette. Shaka Smart, 13th year as a head coach, trying to get a top 10 victory over the fighting Illini in the first game of the Gabbett tip off games here in 2021. Marcel, their leading scorer, stops and knocks down another one. He really has that mid-range game down. Stops. Great job with the dribble, not over-dribbling. Pull it up. And he's a point away from reaching 20 for the third consecutive game to start the season. Curbelo high-arcing off the mark. Foul on the rebound, and it's going to go against Illinois' Coleman Hawkins. And this comes from that timeout with Shaka Smart saying, you get your guy, you get your guy, find your way back, find the man that you're guarding, and that will lead them into a forced bad shot, and that's exactly what you got there. Corbello falling away from two-point range, just a low percentage shot. And Donnie, now the fouls start to become a story here. Eight on Illinois, so it's a one and one. Marquette with five fouls as Morcell steps to the stripe. And this is where he should live the rest of the game, right at this foul line. He's such a good free throw shooter. is the front end, so he still has 19 points. Marquette on a 9-0 run. Illinois looking to stop that. Inside is seven minutes to play. There's Frazier, that same spot, and he hit again. Six triples tonight for the senior. I'm still getting the ball to Daryl Morsell and, and letting him get to the rim and get back to that foul line. It's been Morcell and Frazier. An offensive foul they're going to get on Justin Lewis. We talked a couple minutes ago about 
these guys getting the ball and where they get it. Remember we talked about Lewis and Marcel. It should be a steady diet of them, but we know what Illinois is thinking, a steady diet of Trent Frazier from that corner pocket. This is not the way you get Lewis into his offense. You want to run stuff for him, some cross screens, get him into a comfortable spot, not backing down from basically 18 feet. Well, Frazier has six threes. His career high is seven. We mentioned that he's now over 250 during his time at Illinois. Top four in program history. He's been the man. Curbelo fading away, got fouled. is up and they've done a really good job of kind of weathering the storm but tell you what this team is in desperate need of Kofi Coburn because now he's not a guy that's going to you know always dominate but you just know where he is on the floor you can start your offense through him at least get him a touch all else fails you run a little pick and roll I mean they really look lost without him at times in this game even though they they have the lead Donnie you said what I was going to say the pick and roll there's Kofi with Curbelo that's where those two are so dangerous and that's an element certainly missing from their offense and, and he has such great hands Colburn you throw it up there he'll go get it anywhere the backboard and in for Tyler Kolak to cut it back down to six with six to play. Crowd wanted the push off on Curbelo, no call. Curbelo down inside for Dog. Extra pass, Hawkins. Williams shot clock at five in the lane. The same issue that Shaka Smart had with his team in the first half is what you just saw there. Find a body. Hawkins coming in from that elbow. No one in front of him. Just can't happen. And I understand big guys get pushed away from the basket, but you have to find a body. It's something that Shaka Smart has been talking about all game. Find your men. Both is what you get. Guys who have been through it, they've been through the battles, the wars, they get buckets when you need them, and that's what's happening right now. Illinois, by the way, took that timeout. They have one remaining, two left for Marquette, 65 57. Lewis trying to feed inside. A foul, though, called against Illinois after that pass hit the rim. It's a tough call. It was defended very well. And if you're Lewis, this will come with more playing time. Remember, just a sophomore. But I understand when your coach calls a play, you want to run it. But if the defense does a great job, you have to now take your option. I thought that would have been a nice little 15-foot pull-up. They got away with it. So you're going to have to learn to play through those situations if you're Justin Lewis. Nine team fouls on Illinois, so Marquette going forward will shoot two the rest of the way. That's it! That's it! Urquith, the Oklahoma transfer, gets them both. Now if you're Marquette, same thing. Match up, you're in a really good spot here. Just got to find a guy. You got to communicate. Nothing silly on that defensive end. Every possession is so important the rest of the way. Resetting with Curbelo. 10 to shoot. Curbelo with a screen. Leans in. Off the glass. Didn't get the bounce. Rebound down to Quest. The true freshman for Pennsylvania. And there's a grab. 
And it's against Devontae Williams. So as I said, two free throws now for the final 437. I don't know if I care for the call. I think you can call that every single time down the floor. You know, you're getting into a game. It's a, a good game. You know, there's going to be contact. I, I don't care for the call. Only one player for Illinois has more than three fouls, and that's Grandison. He has four. You also have Payne with three. Everybody else, one or two. And Justin Lewis now has 15 points. And more importantly, you make two free throws, it gives your defense a chance to get back and get set up. Rejected by Quest. Two on one. Porcel. No, but he's fouled. Boy, this has been back and forth, back and forth, and now Marquette has all the momentum. Yeah, these block shots are like turnovers. They really are because they they start your fast break with numbers on your side in that situation for Marquette. One player down, now it's four on five, you're, or five on four, you're going the other way. Get a chance to score the ball with the clock stopped again. And Donnie, that's four blocks for Kirkweth, the grad transfer, as Marcel makes it a one possession game. When you come into these seasons where Guys are transferring in. You've had a, lot, a mass exodus in some situations, especially like Marquette. You try to figure out who is your go-to guy late in games. Well, I think already, I think Marquette has figured out who that guy is. Got to make his free throws. I might have jinxed him earlier, but <laughs> I think Marcel's got to be the guy for Marquette. Corbello, baseline. Again, it's rejected. Five blocks for Quest. Now Lewis, a three would tie it for Marquette, stripped out of bounds, and that went off of Mitchell. Good defense by Andre Curbelo, and that takes us to our final media timeout. But some, sometimes you just have to say, you know what? I got to stay out of this guy's house. And this is Quetz, so much time in and so much work in on his game throughout his career to, to now see it come full circle. And that doesn't mean that he couldn't have had a great career not scoring 20 points in a game. It just means that all of his hard work has made him into this complete player, or as they like to call it nowadays, a two-way player can get it done at both ends of the floor. A pair of 2-0 teams in week two of the college basketball season. Game one of the Gavin Tipoff games. And Kirkbello has it taken away by Cleff. He's doing it all. He has five blocks, and now that steal. And now he's trying to throw it down with one hand, and he got fouled. But Kirk Cleff has injected some excitement into this stadium and into this Marquette offense. We have to remember the guys that Marcel played with, Bruno Fernando. You know, he's played with Jalen Smith, some long guys when he was at Maryland, and that was a lot of their plays. Pick, roll, throw it up, let your big guy go and get it. So, although Marcel is scoring, he's also making the right plays because he's had experience with guys the size of Kirk Webb. Yeah, those two guys that you mentioned, Fernando and Stick Smith, they were spectacular bigs for the Terps. And what a game Kirk Queth has had. You know, the five blocks ties his career high. Just had that steal. However, he misses both at the line. Free throw discrepancy. Marquette has got there 24 times, made 15. It's a great opportunity for Curbelo to really finish this game the right way, take care of the basketball. Just as you say that, Downey. Oh, he gets bailed out. A foul. He almost turned it over. And sometimes players, they want to try to win games by themselves. I'm not saying Corbello's, Corbello's trying to do this, but this is a great opportunity where you can win a game 
for your team by just being solid. <laughs> you know, just you don't have to make a flashy play down the stretch. No home run plays, as we like to say. Just be solid. Well, he does have now the 11 points to go along with six rebounds, but three assists, six turnovers for Curbelo. You know, you don't want to take the creativity away from a guy like Andre Curbelo, but you do want him to curb it a little bit late game, especially close ones. Brad Underwood is going to corral Coleman Hawkins, tell him to cool his temper. Last thing they need right now is a technical. And I think that was an easy call for the official. You swipe down. Anytime you swipe down at the ball when the opponent has it, it's a, it's an easy call. Maybe swiping up if you get a little bit of the ball in the hand, they don't see it. But anytime you swing down, that's an easy call for the stripes. And yet again, Morcell steps to the line with a chance to make this a one possession game again. Defensively by Marquette. And short clocks are always tough. And just take a look at Payne's head as he goes to the floor. Oh. Boy, he hit his head hard, Dottie. And clearly in some pain. Good news, though, he's going to stay in. Replaced by Grandison, who's playing with four fouls for Illinois. Lewis's big night continues, and Marquette has pulled with a penny. Two shots. 
has continued to play for the Illini. Yeah, and the arrow with Illinois. Demonte Williams, he's gone over 500 career rebounds tonight. He has more career rebounds than he does points. this Brandon how about two foot stop you pivot and you make a chest pass or you make a pass around your defender maybe while he was in Austin he did beat Kansas last year when they were top 10 and now trying to knock off Illinois in his third game as Marquette's head coach look he's done a lot Brandon we know that 11 seasons with 19 plus wins, a final four appearance, but boy, what this would do for Shot the Smart to get a win here. Well, that's the guy they wanted to shoot at Donnie, but more self missed it. We're inside of a minute here. Curbelo taking a little time off the clock. Remember, Frazier's the leading scorer for the Illinois. Illini, but it's Corbello that takes the jump and misses it. Quest secures the rebound. Is that a foul? Yes. A costly foul is going against Demonte Williams. And now Marquette can walk to the other end to try to take the lead. It's a good shot. I don't mind the shot by Corbello. And Kirk Quest says, you know what, I got to get this ball to somebody who's a better free throw shooter than me. Williams just fouls him going for the steal. And the guy who goes to the line is Stevie Mitchell, who is a true freshman from Reading, Pennsylvania. What a spot for him. And he misses the first. Pennsylvania Gatorade player of the year missed them both and Illinois keeps that one-point lead well you got to think about fouling here just a two-second difference where Colette comes in and steals it he gets fouled count the basket Marquette's in front And it reminds me of something that Shaka Smart said when he first got to Marquette. He said, if you don't have experience, you better have enthusiasm and passion. And that's exactly what they've shown the last five minutes of this game. Not a lot of experience coming from some positions, especially that guy right there, but passion and enthusiasm. But he misses the free throw, so a one-point Marquette lead. Shot clock off. Illinois does have a timeout if they want to use it. But Curbelo's going to go to work. In the lane, he lost it. Quick took it away. And Marquette dribbles it out. They stun Illinois, coming back from down 12. And they win it 67-66. for Shaka Smart. Again, he's already done...